Thank you for the, uh, for the kind introduction. My name is Lawrence van der Maaten, and I'm a research director at Facebook AI Research. And I'm here to tell you about some of the work we've been doing on bringing together the fields of secure computation and machine learning. In particular, I will focus on how to do machine learning using secure multi-party computation. The work I'll present in this talk is done by this awesome team, which includes Brian, Shoba, Mark, Shubo, Ani, and myself. Secure multi-party computation is a set of techniques in which we have two or more parties that both have some data that they want to provide as input into the computation, but that needs to remain private. In a machine learning setting, this data would typically be training or test data for a machine learning model. To achieve this, the parties construct secret shares of the data that they exchange with each other. Together, the secret shares can be used to reconstruct the data, but each individual party cannot infer any information from the secret shares that they possess. What is cool about the secret shares is that they have homomorphic properties. This means that the parties can collaborate to evaluate functions on the secret share data. For example, they can evaluate or even train a machine learning model. From the results of these computations, which are themselves also secret shares, the parties can still not infer anything about the underlying private data. Secure multi-party computation is truly exciting because it brings the potential to create all the value that machine learning can create while maintaining the privacy of the data that the machine learning uses. And, and it makes sure that the data cannot be compromised. This may allow us to solve important problems using machine learning that we cannot solve today. This led us to ask ourselves the question, what would a secure and privacy preserving machine learning platform look like? This is a difficult question. What does it mean for a machine learning platform, for instance, PyTorch, to be secure or privacy preserving? In a platform like PyTorch, could we have some kind of global flag that says private is true and then magically all your computations are performed in secure and, and privacy preserving way? I don't think we're there yet, but over the past year, a, a team of engineers and researchers at Facebook has worked very hard on delivering some first answers to this question in a project that we call Crypten. I'm very excited to share some of our first results with you. A few months ago, we've open source Crypten so that everybody can build on the work that our team is doing. So what is Crypten? Crypten is a platform for research in machine learning using secure computation techniques. It aims to enable machine learning researchers who are not cryptography experts to experiment with machine learning models using secure computing techniques and to get a realistic view of what is possible, what is difficult, how efficient these techniques are, etc. Krypton closely follows the design principles and the API of PyTorch. Because PyTorch is the most popular machine learning framework today, we hope that this lowers the barrier to entry for machine learning researchers and developers who are often already familiar with PyTorch. In, in Krypton, we adopted three main design principles. The first one is Krypton is machine learning first. We designed it to expose complex cryptographic techniques, such as secure multi-party computation, in an API that's very familiar to machine learning researchers that use PyTorch, because it's essentially the same API. Krypton uses eager execution. We closely follow PyTorch's design philosophy with an imperative programming style. And this makes debugging and learning about the underlying techniques easier compared to, for instance, a compiler approach. And Krypton is realistic. Each party in the multi-party computation runs in its own process and if you want on its own machine. All the communication is real. Um, it's performed using PyTorch distributed backends. So there are no shortcuts. The core primitive in Krypton is an object called the Crypt Tensor. It is an object that looks just like a PyTorch or NumPy tensor, but it is encrypted. It's provably Im impossible for a single party to inspect the contents of the tensor unless all parties unanimously agree that the tensor can be revealed publicly, which is done by calling the get plain text function in this example. Yet this is not stopping the crypt tensor from performing computations. 
we can add two crypt tensors, which will result in another crypt tensor that contains the encrypted result of the addition. Note that in this process, none of the encrypted content was ever revealed to any of the parties. We can also add regular unencrypted PyTorch tensors to crypt tensors. So you can mix and match encrypted and unencrypted data. The sum of a crypt tensor and of a unencrypted flow tensor is a crypt tensor. And again, the encrypted content is never revealed to any of the parties. Under the hood, the crypt tensor implements a lot of cryptographic machinery. In particular, it provides full implementations of arithmetic and binary secret sharing and tools that convert between these types of secret sharing. Together, this allows Krypton to implement a large number of encrypted operations. I will get to that in a sec. Communication between the parties involved in secret sharing is real and efficient. It is implemented via PyTorch's distributed backends uh, using, using um, um, a library called Clue. The crypt tensor wraps all this cryptography in a tensor object um, that looks like a regular PyTorch tensor, which makes it easy for machine learning researchers to use as they don't have to understand the underlying cryptographic technology. Krypton supports a large number of operations. We support all linear operations, including convolutions. Herein, we assume a curious but honest security model in which a trusted third party provides random beaver triples for the computation. Um, at present, we're also working on an extension where uh, beaver triples are generated via uh, homomorphic encryption um, using a PIE scheme. Krypton implements various efficient ways of computing powers. It computes square roots and other non-integer powers in the logarithmic domain. It can do this because it implements operations such as logarithms, exponentials, and reciprocals via efficient approximations. Exponentials are performed using a limit approximation, logarithms using householder iterations, and reciprocals using Newton Repson iterations. This allows Krypton to implement virtually every operation people are using in modern machine learning. Um, this includes things like sigmoids, softmaxes, binary and multi-class logistic loss functions, as well as their gradients. So Krypton is really giving you all the ingredients that you need in order to implement neural networks uh, in secure multi-party computation. We also support operations such as computing maximum and minimum values, arcmaxes, signs, rectified linear units, and other operations that require us to compare encrypted values. This may sound easy, but it's actually very difficult in an encrypted world because the bit that indicates which of two values is larger cannot become known by any of the parties. Not only does Krypton support a very large collection of operations, it also supports these for an arbitrary number of parties. So we did not do any optimizations for you know, just two or three parties. It's really implementing a generics protocol. Because Krypton's support for operations is almost the same as that of PyTorch, you can actually take complex PyTorch models, encrypt these models, and run them on encrypted inputs without much effort. In this example, we set up the ImageNet dataset, take a pre-trained residual network, a ResNet 18, from the Torch Vision library. We import that model into Krypton, which encrypts it, and then we run it on encrypted ImageNet images. If we open up the encrypted output of the model, we find that that output is just what you would expect. It's the same as um, what the non-encrypted residual network would produce. Um, and so you, you can see that you can do this in, in a very small amount of lines of code. Krypton does not only support encrypted inference, but also encrypted training. To make this easy to do, Krypton includes a full autograd implementation that works just like people have come to expect from modern machine learning frameworks. This example shows how it works. You can set the requires GRED attributes on a crypt tensor to trace all computations that are happening in the model. When you then call the backward function on the output crypt tensor, backpropagation will be performed fully automatically. Gradients get stored in the GRED field of the tensor 
just like in, in PyTorch or TensorFlow. But note that these gradients are, of course, encrypted too, right? So everything is still living in the secure multi-party uh, uh, computation in secret shares. Together with the encrypted models I showed you on the previous slide, this provides you all the tools you need to train encrypted models on encrypted data. Um, as part of Crypten, we provide a bunch of examples and tutorials. Uh, for instance, we show examples of uh, doing encrypted inference using residual networks on ImageNet. We show how to train small convolutional networks on data sets like MNIST or CIFAR, so small image data sets. We show examples of how to train linear support vector machines. And we show an example on how to train contextual bandits with differential privacy. I will go a little bit in a little bit more detail on the contextual bandits example. Contextual bandits are a popular type of learning model, for example, in ranking or recommendation. Bandits constantly learn from the feedback they receive. We perform the study into contextual bandits in which multiple parties provide inputs into the contextual bandits because they have a shared goal. For instance, they want to jointly optimize the recommendations for their users but they want to keep their inputs private. The parties evaluate and train the bandit together using secure MPC. The bandit selects actions, for example, a recommendation that needs to be revealed to the world in a differentially private way. This gives us strict guarantees on how much each party can learn about the inputs from other parties. Interestingly, the differential privacy mechanism that we used, which is basically randomized response, was already known in the contextual bandit literature as well. But that literature refers to it as epsilon greedy and uses it for a diff very different reason, not to obtain privacy. A private contextual bandit algorithm like the one we developed looks quite complicated if you write it in pseudocode in a paper. But it's trivial to implement in Krypton because that already provides all the secure MPC building blocks in such a way that you hardly have to think about it. Looking at some results, this appears to work reasonably well in practice. This result plot shows you average rewards, higher is better, as a function of privacy loss, lower is better. On the far right, where you see infinity on the x-axis, we report the reward obtained by a non-private learner. We show results for three different input sizes, t in the legend. For those of you familiar with differential privacy, the results are for a privacy failure probability of zero. The results show that for a privacy loss greater than or equal to four, the average reward is quite close to the reward a non-private learner would obtain. For certain privacy loss values, the private bandit actually works better than its non-private counterpart. The reason for this is that randomized response introduces some exploration into the learner, which is actually a good thing. We also tested the effectiveness of a white box membership inference attack against our private contextual bandits. The result plot shows the success rate of the attack during training. The membership inference attack has a very low success rate in practice, which suggests that our contextual bandit indeed provides a high degree of privacy in practice. I hope this example has given you a clear idea of the capabilities that Krypton provides. The current version of Krypton focuses only on secure multi-party computation, but our plan is to not stop there. We already have a working prototype of a Cryptanser that is backed by homomorphic encryption. It's not ready for release yet, but we hope to be able to share it with you in the coming months. And over time, we also plan to add a Cryptanser that is backed by a trusted execution environment via technologies like Intel SGX. To be clear, we are not done yet. You cannot yet take Krypton and train, uh, for instance, a BERT model, so sort of the state of the art in language modeling from scratch. But we do hope that Krypton is the start of a journey that at the end of the road will make secure and encrypted machine learning just as easy as platforms like PyTorch have made regular machine learning. And we want to invite all of you to join us on this journey by giving us feedback, contributing to the Krypton code base, or developing awesome new applications on top of crypto.
We are particularly excited that the Open Mind community has announced they'll be teaming up with us by adopting Krypton as the secure MPC backend in their Pricef project. We would like to invite all of you to join us as well. We're excited to see what you come up with. Thank you.